Hey everyone, how are you guys doing? Um, so I'm a little bit late today. Um, that's primarily due to technical issues. But I um, wanted to kind of jump into, um, well, I'm just going to jump into it. So last week I talked about um, the intention on Friday, I think it was when I did a video, and I talked about the intention of um, behind the products kind of like a, a shameless infomercial, I think is what I called it. And um, one of the things I didn't talk about, and you may or may not be aware of this, is that um, I have a radio show here in Madrid every Monday evening. And over the last few weeks, we have my co-host and I, who happens to be my son, we've been talking about the four agreements. And we've been breaking it down agreement per um, week. And I'm not surprised that whenever we... Um, Kind of like start to examine things in life. It doesn't make any difference what it is. We've all, we're always we're consistently given the opportunity to live it. Um, it reminds me of the movie um, um, Evan Almighty, where Morgan Freeman, who plays God, is sitting there in the restaurant talking to Evan's wife, and she's distraught over a number of things. And he looks at her and he says, "You know, um, do you think if you pray to God for patience, He's going to make you patient?" or give you opportunities to be patient. That line stuck out for me because the fact is, is that we're not just handed anything. We are given the opportunity to be what we seek. And so through that, the, um, the four agreements have really come to life for me. Um, if you're not familiar with the book, can we just say the first three are be impeccable with your word, which I interpret to be the way I speak to myself, um, which in turn will uh, um, upgrade the way I speak to others, being very, very intentional about what it is I'm trying to create within myself and the world around me. So it's really about honoring ourselves, uh, honoring our truth, our, 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 our authentic self. Um, the second agreement is to take nothing personally, um, which has, I mean, all of these have been a real exercise for me, and um, I'm going to probably write a little bit, for, write a little bit about it later today in a note, um, kind of ex exploring it, exp I, I guess sharing my process over the last year and what actually brings me to this particular video or live recording. Um, the other one, the third one, is to make no assumptions, which is in the description box here. Um, which is really about clarity, is learning how to ask questions. And I say learning how because a lot of us have been told not to question anything and um, just accept what's said to us, you, you know, accept the information that's provided. And um, therefore, a lot of us walk around, I feel, in um, a state of confusion, um, overwhelmed because we're not gaining the clarity. We're not seeking clarity. We don't, um, it, I don't want to use the word, we, I don't want to say we lack the courage to ask questions, and yet I somehow think that is because we've been raised, basically, to not question authority. I mean, and understandably so, okay? It's, we, I get it. We have children. You know, we give them instructions, whether they're in school or at home or on the playground or on the streets. They, there's, a set, you know, there's rules that help us kind of create that, that synergy. Um, and so I do understand the whole concept of not questioning authority when it is, you know, somebody of, uh, in a position of wisdom, I'm not going to use the word power, but in a position of wisdom that has the ability to um, kind of guide, mentor and guide. And so, it, but there's a fine line there. That's how I see it. There's a real fine line because having the ability to understand is what I think is very, very important. And that's been my MO my entire life. I have really, no matter what, and I, it, it's what got me in a lot of trouble. Um, people would say something or they would give me instructions and I would want to know why. Not because I was being derogatory or I was, you know, I wasn't necessarily even challenging them. I wanted to understand. And understanding is what this world, for me, this is what my life is about, is really coming to that place of understanding and what I've discovered is that when we understand, we have a, we actually open ourselves up to being able to love. And um, 
it doesn't necessarily mean we're best friends with the individual and that we're going to go out and we're going to hang out and we're going to do all kinds of things and we're going to be texting and that's not that it's about understanding why somebody did or is doing what they're doing from a place in order to to create a level of acceptance maybe even have some sense of compassion again we may not align with what they're doing it may not work for us with what we're doing at the same time by not making assumptions about somebody um, or about ourselves or about our lives and we start to gain clarity and then we now have the opportunity to accept have compassion for determine whether it's working for us or not working for us and at that point we can make sh a shift if necessary hence the reason I titled this shift happens <laughs> So like I said, later on today, I will add a note on here kind of describing my process. Um, I shared it with my daughter earlier this morning um, because emotionally it's been a rough, rough several months. And um, it's not because, I mean, and, and again, this comes down to being intentional with what I'm trying to create, creating impeccability in my world. Um, not taking things personally, which I have been very weak at, um, you know, when things don't work out, it has always been something that I've done. I've taken it personally, like, you know, like, what did I do wrong? Well, you know, kind of thing. And um, being overly apologetic for um, how I might have created something over here that was less than favorable. It, at the same time, I just know at this point that I've always done the best that I could consistently. And that truthfully has restored a great deal of peace for me, but it's actually allowed me to step into gaining clarity over my current situation. Again, when I look at this book, The Four Agreements, even though it, it speaks in a way that encourages us to be mindful and thoughtful of the world around us, the only way we can actually do that is to employ that within ourselves. And I've um, taught a lot of um, digestive wellness courses to holistic health practitioners, and that was one of the things that I consistently did in every class, no matter who was in there, no matter how much experience they had in holistic wellness. I always, I always turned the entire course around and had them focus on themselves <clears throat> because all the coursework is about how we are going to work with individuals um, as clinicians and at the same time if we cannot employ those practices in our own lives then it has it's less effective you know it's kind of like a, um, a Mercedes car salesman driving a Toyota and I know we can all talk about you know why that might be maybe he's not making enough money to drive a Mercedes you know but being upfront about that is at least helping to create an understanding and not saying that he doesn't get behind the brand it's just that right now I'm not in a position and that actually might boost the sales if he's honest you know as opposed to kind of hiding in the shadows so it's, it's, it brings it restores a degree of integrity personal integrity in which in which case it becomes a more powerful way of interacting with the world so enough about all of that but that's kind of what and so what came to mind for me to talk about today with regards to making no assumptions really was spawned by a conversation my son Kenton got involved with. Um, he's known here on Facebook as Decimus Bottle because he's in the SCA. Um, that is his um, clan or his name in that organization. But he got involved in, an, um, in a discussion with an older man who um, basically was telling people not to tell their children, you know, if, how can you tell your children um, not to believe in Santa um, you know, he's talking about the belief in Santa and if you're going to, you know, how could you say you cannot believe in Santa if you still believe in the power of essential oils <clears throat> or the effectiveness of essential oils? And um, he, without even, he brought it to my attention that this had happened because he's lived with me, obviously, his whole life. He's been around this from, you know, with me and he hears me. And a large part of this year for me has been delivering the message as to their impeccability when they are genuine and authentic. Um, I have um, rocked the boat a couple of times when I've said that therapeutic is simply a marketing term, that therapeutic is not a classification for quality of oil. It, in so many respects, everything is therapeutic because therapeutic means having a physiological effect. So the, the physiological effect of many chemicals, and many chemicals have a physiological effect, 
so if we want to call this therapeutic in the sense of healing and restoring wellness or encouraging the body to heal and restoring wellness, that is questionable. But if we're looking at things like genuine and authentic, it means they've, been, they've run their gamut of testing and um, therefore now qualify as having um, <clears throat> a higher, um, more profound effect on the body. I'm going to say it that way, a more profound, more um, sought after effect. Um, so he's been around me for that. I mean, like I said, for most of his life, um, I've been working with, he's 29. I've been working with the oils since he was one. And um, have been researching and studying them and ultimately attempted to um, fit into a world, a medical model that um, was getting away from what is so for me. And this is the reason why last week I began to talk about that the, the intention behind any product that I pr provide really is about stabilization and keeping the peace. That is a more energetic value than, a, I mean, yes, there is a medicinal quality to it. At the same time, like I said, many chemicals, especially if they're lipophilic, have what's known as a physiological effect. They have the ability to um, potentially cross the blood-brain barrier. They have the ability to influence genetic activity and so on. And this is the reason why we have so many issues in the world that we do health-wise. So the, like I said, the intention behind my products have been to, um, create, to keep the peace, to help establish an inner peace that um, is otherwise challenged as a result of the environment and a lot of, uh, you know, and this whole concept of taking things personally and making, you know, making assumptions. So not having clarity and all of that degree of mental and emotional distress and in addition to environmental distress, really does disrupt ease, comfort, and order. Hence, dis-ease, discomfort, and disorder. So um, that's pretty much why I have done that and why I've just recently um, launched a chakra line because I really believe in the energetic systems of the body. Um, I'm really excited to be able to do this um, hands-on. Uh, it looks to me like I'm going to be able to work in um, at least one um, spa, hotel spa here in, in the Santa Fe area and possibly here in the Madrid Cerrillos area. <clears throat> and it just is exciting to me because I love being in that healing. And this is where getting clarity for me is because, like I said, I stepped into some shoes probably about five years ago now where I was really trying to keep up with the nutraceutical industry and I, you know, almost my energy was like, I'm going to dump on everybody and prove to you that what I'm doing, it, it was just all about trying to be accepted, trying to fit in. And ultimately I brought myself into the position where um, I was forced to look at by my own doing Nobody else did this to me. I'm not being, nobody in this world is being punished. Nobody in this world um, is having um, bad things happen to them um, on, deliberately. I mean, we're all here to thrive, and it's our own doing that either, um, little bugs, sometimes I get like a little nap. Um, it's by our own doing, is how I see it. And again, you'll read more about that in the note that I share later this afternoon, but through my own doing, um, I was introduced to um, what choices I have made, and um, really had to, I was I've been um, have forced my own hand to really look at which direction I wanted to go. Did I you know because the truth is for me my truth, um, and this is what I was talking about on the radio program the other night. Which if you go to my um, my personal profile, um, you can actually see the video still there and listen in on it. Uh, but my own personal truth is because what, when I mean, just say this, we talked about truth and fact, and I'll get into that whole thing about essential oils and, and Santa in just a bit. Um, but the truth, my personal truth, a truth, the difference between truth and fact is a person, a truth is my personal truth. And then there's fact. And I know that there's, you know, we can debate that, but to me, um, how I see the fact is this is a candle. Okay, that's a fact. That's a candle. Um, if I started to describe this candle, now that gets into an interpretation. But, you know, for right now, the symbol for this 
is candle. I mean, we see this and the symbol meaning the word for this is candle. So in some regards, you can call that a fact. Um, we can get pretty, like I said, we can kind of get a little um, detailed in that. However, truth is something that resonates for each one of us. So there's the ultimate truth is love, how I see it. And then there, we all have our own personal truth, which in that case is being in the position of loving ourselves. And I don't mean this to sound like it's some kind of crazy, foo-foo, hippie kind of like peace, love, and everything groovy. I'm talking about love in the sense of power. And um, honestly, through, again, my own exploration of myself, I can completely understand why we have addiction, why we have disordered eating, and so forth. It's, it's, a, it's a third chakra issue. Primarily, we have sexual addiction, which gets into more of a second chakra issue. So these are energetic imbalances in the system where we feel this in the case of the third chakra, we feel disempowered. And honestly, for a number of reasons that I don't necessarily want to share here, but it will be in that note, um, possibly. And I'm happy to, to answer any questions because I, um, I want to be transparent about this, but just for the sake of time. <laughs> um, I've been disempowered. I have felt disempowered most of my life. I have believed in the mantra. It has been my mantra, follow your heart, you know, um, live your truth, these kinds of ideals. And then at the same time, I've consistently stepped away from it. But again, not as a bad thing, because it's actually brought me to something that's very, very important. But nonetheless, I have felt extremely disempowered unknowingly. And because I didn't know how to stand in my and, and love myself because why I was taking things personally. Um, if I saw a argument between my parents or there was a disruption in the household, I took it to mean that I did something. I was the, you know, and that's um, a very arrogant position to be in, meaning I was, it's all about me. And I wasn't trying to be like, oh, it's all about me. I, I did that. That's not what I'm saying. It was more of like um, I would wither and um, on the inside and so the only way that I knew to empower myself was to hide behind um, drug use and I the only way I knew how to you know even empower my my body was to um, con uh, control my food and that's where the disorder eating came in so I do completely understand that in the sense of um, how when we don't we don't live our authentic selves, we end up creating these experiences, again, not from a bad thing, um, not because we're being punished, but because it's there and we've created it as a, as a means for um, moving forward, from learning from, being able to distinguish what's really going on for us so that we can actually make a shift. And um, uh, so, I just want to regroup here for a minute. So in the case of, um, I guess I'm just going to go into talking about more of it, getting back into the oils, but this is how uh, I see, I mean, this it's really, oh gosh, being empowered is, I mean, this is really where it comes into is being our authentic self, as I want to say that. So that's where the agreements come in and making no assumptions is part of it and gaining clarity around that. And so, um, when I heard the other day that, you know, somebody was questioning the integrity of essential oils and I thought, you know, that's just, we're trying to, um, we're so wrapped up in taking other people's words, you know, the authority, so to speak, science. And this is where I stepped into, like I said, five years ago, trying to um, fit into a medical model so that I would almost be accepted, not even almost, that was like a really weak thing to say just now, but to be accepted, to actually find you know a, a strength in my my business because I wasn't really standing in love for what in, in, in love for myself and when I I was afraid of not being accepted I was afraid that I was going to fail in business I was afraid that I was going to be maybe even mocked because you know essential oils as in that meme you know in that post said um, they're not to really be you know taken seriously you know not if you're going to believe you know if you're it's not to be believed in. And so even though a lot of people would say I shouldn't let that get to me, I did. 
And again, this is my psyche. This is the way I've been. So I didn't stand in that place of love for myself and love for what made sense to me and love for what resonated for me. And so I went down this, this journey. And, and in some regards, it was very beneficial because the fact is, is I learned an awful lot about the oils and I learned about how they actually affect us physically, which is the reason why my product line does say it's safe for all ages and it's safe for use with medications. That is something that's, that's important, and that comes back into, the, the, into the, the validity of the oils. But for five years, I stood in this, I tried to do it the energetic way, but I didn't have enough information to be able to create um, the inner peace that I've been talking about. So therefore, I stepped off of that pathway and went into a pathway that was more medically minded, evidence-based, and um, as a result, um, I stepped away from what resonated for me. Um, and again, we can talk about being afraid that I wasn't going to make it. And it just is, is it, you know, I don't want to even question it or judge it. It is what it is. I made the decision to do it. But this last year has led me down a path that really caused me to take a look at what do I want to do? Do I want to keep pushing against something and fighting something? Or do I want to go in the direction that makes sense to me? Being very afraid to go into a direction that actually felt right to me. Because the fact is, money is a part of our existence. It's a, that's, that's how we survive. And um, so I was brought to a position of, you know, which one is the best for me? And um, honestly, what I've come to realize is that working with energy systems and really <sighs> Breathing life into the cell structure where it does not create conflict within the system given the fact of the type of world we live in That's really what made that's where I'm at at this point And again had I not stepped off and veered into a medical model mind evidence-based mind I wouldn't have the information today that said I'm off that <laughs> I'm off that wheel. I don't want to engage in conversations truthfully about um, um, histamine or um, oxalates or anything like that because that's nitpicking the body to a degree and we I, I like the idea for me it works to make sense to back away from all of that and focus on the energy of the system and really helping the body create the inner peace so if we're going to consult about anything then it would be along the lines of where is there dis-ease where is there disorder and discomfort and helping to stabilize that but really getting into the energy of things so that's really what i had to get clear about is what made sense to me and it's funny i really finally got to that point of division like okay i get to choose and um truthfully um what's been fascinating to me and I believe part of it has to do with we, you know, when our energy, like when I go out and I talk to people about wanting to be like an integrative health consultant and wanting to take insurance and, um, and I'm happy to talk with you, with you about all of the chemical imbalances in your body, even though I can confidently do it because I understand it, it doesn't, I don't feel as powerful. Okay. And that's primarily because I'm up against a lot of um, pushback because of the medical model and the disbelief that essential oils have any effect. At the same time, we do recognize the energetic effect. <clears throat> and regardless, I feel more comfortable. I feel at home talking about the energy of the oils and how they can benefit us at the cell level. That makes me smile on the inside. And so that's the clarity that I had to get to. So there's where the shift happens. The shift just went from, is this evidence-based? Absolutely. Am I going to come out and talk about all the, all the neurochemical issues that I can? I can and I, I might if I, can, if I can weave the energy into it. And that might be a fun thing to do, um, to begin just talking about how we can weave energy into the evidence-based model. But we'll see how that goes. But for now, that's the shift that's happened for me. It's, um, and if whoever checked in earlier and saw me hemming and hawing, I, I, I thanks for <laughs> bearing with, you know, for checking it out. Um, you caught me at an, at a, at a moment where I kind of like lost the point I was talking about standing in love for myself. Again, that's not the hippy dippy thing. 
even though I love peace and love, it really is, it's not the, it's not the foo-foo thing is what I want to say. Because when we love ourselves, we are empowered. When we love ourselves, we have that confidence and that courage. We have the ability to be assertive. Um, we have the desire to be clear. That's where we are standing in love for ourselves. So um, that's what I meant by all of that. And so that's the beauty of these agreements. And truthfully, if everybody, in my opinion, if everybody actually took that book and really worked on it with themselves, I think we would see a magnificent shift in the way we interact with one another because we would be interacting with ourselves so much differently. Anyway, I appreciate you guys being here. And till um, I come back, more than likely next week, um, let me know if there's any questions that you have that you would like for me to answer on this and or anything else. Like I said, I'm really curious about how I could potentially talk about weaving energy into this evidence-based world that we um, are demanding. Okay, so blessings to you guys and um, thanks for being here and thanks for being on this journey with me. I will chat with you soon.